Alright guys, welcome back. In this video we want to use the moment area method to find slope and deflection at the free end of this cantilever beam. It's got a point load and an applied moment acting at the end there. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to generate a bending moment diagram. And then here if possible we're going to want to find a little bit of geometry like for example where it crosses the axes. And once we've got that done, then what we want to do is we want to make a copy of the bending moment diagram and just put it right below. And this is going to become our M over EI diagram. So uh, we basically just want to divide every point on the graph by EI, which is our flexural rigidity. It's up here. It's 20 times 10 to the 6. Uh, what is that? Newton meter squared. So if we just clear out the space here, um, we're going to divide each point so we get 0 0.003 meters to the minus 1 and negative 0 0.005 meters to the minus 1. So now we have the M over EI diagram. Let's, uh, we, did, we did divide everything by EI, so let's throw that in there. That's our M over EI diagram. Now what we have to do is we have to pick two points on the M over EI diagram that we want to find the relative slope and tangential deviation between. So what we always want to do is we want to pick one point that we have some information about, whether it's its slope or displacement in the deformed structure. And the other point that we want to pick is the point that we're looking for information about. So we can kind of guess that the deformed structure might look something like this, where it comes down and then maybe bends back up again, because this ben the bending moment diagram is telling us that the first part is going to be uh, concave down and the second part is going to be concave up. So we would have that inflection point basically at uh, 1.25 meters. So it might look something like this. So if we go and draw on our tangent at point A, this is going to be perfect because we know that the slope, even in the deformed structure right at A, at this rigid connection, is still going to be horizontal. And so we're going to be able to take our slope, our relative slope uh, calculations based off of the horizontal, which will give us the actual slope at B here. Um, and then also for tangential deviation, if we draw a tangent on point B, then this angle here that we're going to get is going to be theta B with respect to A basically the relative angle between the tangents. And because the tangent is passing through this endpoint and is at the slope of that endpoint, when we take the tangential deviation, uh, basically this is going to be T B with respect to A. This comes from the second moment area theorem. The actual distance of the tangential deviation, uh, or the, basically the separation, the vertical separation of these two tangent lines at point B, is going to be the actual deflection of the beam, because the point that this tangent line is touching the beam at is actually a point on the beam. And I guess for the uh, the first moment area theorem, we have this expression, and uh, again, that's just saying that because we know that uh, the slope here at A is staying that the tangent the slope the tangent of the the deformed structure here is horizontal because of the rigid connection then when we find um then when we find theta b with respect to a that's actually going to just be theta b and then here where we find uh the tangential deviation of b with respect to a that's actually just going to be the, the deflection of point B on the deflected structure. Okay, so these expressions work when we take uh, our integral here from point A to B. And in this case, we've set A as the very left-hand side of the beam and B as the very right-hand side. And that works because of the discussion we just had. So what we need to do then is this integral here is just the area of the M over EI diagram between A and B. We can even put on a and B. So where we have areas here below the axis, we're going to treat that as negative, and then areas above the axis, we're going to treat that as positive. So if we label this area 1 and area 2, their areas are negative 0.003125 radians and positive 0.00125 radians. So when we look at the first moment area theorem, like I said, it is the just the total area between those two sections. So we get um, theta b with respect to a is just equal to the sum of all of these areas. So it's just a1 plus uh, a2. So if we just add these two together, we get negative 0 0.002 radians. So this negative sign here is indicating to us that the actual angle on the displaced structure at point b is angled down like this. So we might have drawn on, well, it, look, it appears that we've drawn on our assumed tangent here wrong, but that's okay. We're going to come back to that as soon as we figure out 
what the uh, the tangential deviation is. And we can get that uh, by multiplying the centroids of the areas times the areas of the areas uh, on the m over ei diagram. So in this case we have two distinct areas here. We have one and two and they each have their own centroid which is a certain distance away from b. So those distances are found by measuring the distance from the centroid to the end of the triangle. So in this case for area one uh, the, the distance from the centroid to the small side of the triangle is um, it's two-thirds times base, two-thirds times base, and then we're going all the way to B, the distance to B, so we have to add in this extra distance here, plus 0 0.75 meters, which is the entire length of the other triangle. So if we just fill that in, we get 1.583 meters from here all the way over to here. Okay, so for x2, um, we're just taking the centroid uh, to, for the distance between the centroid and the tall side of a triangle, so that's just a one-third times base, and so that is equal to one-third times uh, 0 0.75 meters, and that's going to give us 0 0.25 meters. So for the second moment area theorem, we get t, uh, the tangential deviation uh, of b from a, is just equal to x bar 1 times a1 plus x bar 2 times a2 and that gives us negative 4.66 millimeters so this is saying that uh, the tangential deviation basically of b with respect to a saying that the tangent of b is 4.33 millimeters below the tangent of a at this point that we did the analysis at so at x equals 2 or at point b however you want to say that so when we look at this this is the drawing that we we guessed is was sort of representing it. We do have the correct uh, concavities here, where it's concave down and then concave up on each side of the inflection point. We have the correct tangential deviation or deflected structure. Again, we can label that on here. That's equal to yb because this tangent line is touching the actual deflected structure there. And again, we can also label this on as uh, uh, this is equal to theta b. So, but what we have here is we drew on theta b here as a positive value, basically coming up from the axis like that. Um, but this has revealed to us that it's, we got this a little bit backwards. So what the actual deflected structure would look like is like this, where the only thing is it doesn't actually curve, it, it doesn't actually curve all the way back up, so it's pointing up. We still have a concave up section and a concave down, but just the end slope here is actually angled down from the horizontal and then it makes this angle here. It's a little messy but this would actually be theta b with respect to a. So there we go, we did find the end, uh, the end slope and the, uh, the end deflection there using the moment area method. And uh, basically when you're doing these problems, all, the most of the work is uh, front end heavy here on the geometry um, and of the M over EI diagram. But basically once you have all of the locations of the centroids and areas on the M over EI diagram, then applying the first moment area theorem and second moment area theorem is really typically pretty easy. We're just making, we're just adding up areas of like triangles, sometimes parabolas or rectangles. And then again, taking those exact same numbers and multiplying them by the distances of their centroids to that point that we're looking for information for. So thanks for watching this far guys, and I will see you in the next video.